Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Thursday, August 15th, and here in the Atlantic we have two systems to talk about, but we're going to focus first on Invest 92L, which is closest to home here, and uh, we see it's moving over the Yucatan Peninsula now with the wave axis uh, inland from Belize all the way up towards the southern Gulf of Mexico here, moving west-northwestward, and you can see how elongated from south to north this entire complex of thunderstorms has become. This really wasn't able to concentrate into a focused small area of low pressure east of the Yucatan last night and it remained an open wave. If we could put a low center anywhere, it's probably just leaving northern Belize and moving into Mexico right about here because the wind in Chetumal has been light out of the easterly direction for the last few hours and there's been nor west to northwest winds coming through Belize. So the low center, if it's anywhere, is probably here, but there's a very sharp wave axis extending northward from that all the way up towards the southern Gulf of Mexico. And this whole thing will be moving uh, generally off towards the northwest, towards the northwestern Yucatan Peninsula over the next day or so. And this is going to be detrimental now uh, for the system's development chances as it gets into the Gulf of Mexico because the fact that it's already stretched out now and it wasn't able to concentrate before moving into the Yucatan Peninsula means that this moisture uh, coming pinwheeling around this upper low here in the central Gulf um, is going to continue heading northward towards this old funnel boundary over the southern U.S. And as this shortwave trough comes out of the Great uh, Plains here and dives down towards the south, this is going to induce even more of a southwest to northeasterly flow over the northern Gulf bringing even more of this moisture up towards the central and eastern Gulf Coast and as the system gets towards the northwest it's just going to continue to get stretched from southwest to northeast and that's not good for tropical development. Tr uh, tropical storms are all about focusing energy in a concentrated area. If you stretch it out uh, it's usually very hard for them to, to get going. This is the European out to 24 hours. You can see the low pressure center west of the Yucatan here and uh, out to 48 hours. You can see it progressing northwest, but notice the vorticity here in orange is getting stretched out. So the wave axis is a uh, really stretched all the way from the southern Gulf up towards the central and eastern Gulf Coast. And that's because of this shortwave trough digging in here, again, stretching the moisture in that direction. And uh, remember, even if the system's guts are down here, there's going to be a lot of rain moving up towards the Gulf Coast. This is the GFS Ensemble mean accumulation for the next four days, showing lots of rain in blue and purple here showing up. And this is an ensemble mean, so some of these totals up towards five and six inches could be locally higher than that for uh, portions of uh, the Gulf Coast from New Orleans eastward towards the Florida Panhandle. So more rain for areas that don't really need it in here, uh, but there is going to be more rain coming your way nonetheless, no matter where the center of this thing actually goes. Now here's the model tracks um, for today, and you see right off the bat there's not very many model tracks um, up here towards the central and eastern Gulf Coast really at any, if any and remember this was the big focus region for the GFS models and the Canadian and all these models coming towards the north Gulf Coast we see really none of that today and remember the GFS here its problem was feeding back and developing this northern part of the wave that has not happened. The low pressure center is down here over the Yucatan. As we talked about, the Canadian and GFS had a bias in here, and that ended up being a true bias that is not reflective of reality, and so we have the low farther south. And as a result, it's in a pattern where it can get a little bit more stuck down here, getting stretched out to the northeast with all that rain and moisture going towards the trough. But the guts of the system hang back, and we can see that on the European here with the lowest pressures hanging back while the vorticity gets stretched and that's what we're seeing on the models now with almost all of them farther west west of the Mississippi now these models here coming into western Louisiana and Texas still look kind of wrong to me I don't think uh, these are really going to pan out uh, these are based on more feedback of vorticity along that stretched line that you see here on the European, a lot of models take a portion of this, focus it, and move it up. I think it's more likely to hang back a little bit more down here, but we'll have to watch. With these stretched boundaries, it's usually a little hard to tell, but you can see them shifting west, and these tracks here may just be a transition period between them seeing more of the guts of the system heading just off towards the northwest, towards uh, a portion of the Mexican coastline or southern Texas here and uh, so yes it's possible we could get some rain into southern Texas from this but most of the rain is going to be stretched out towards the northeast and the UK Met here 
this has been the best model so far with the system. Absolutely superb representation of uh, the wave as it has come towards the Yucatan this morning, and it's been consistent for the last few days with that. Definitely the best model winning here so far. It shows this actually redeveloping into, well, not redeveloping, developing for the first time into a tropical depression as it eventually moves northwest. And that's because as this trough here digs in, it's going to eventually start lifting out in about three days. Uh, so by Sunday, uh, high pressure could build in behind this trough and uh, so we could get this to spin up a little bit more in here. But it's kind of a 50-50 right now in my mind, whether this gets concentrated again, it could eat just as easily get stretched to death and never be able to concentrate in any one area again. But we do have the UK Med and a couple of other models still showing this, trying to ramp up a little bit in the Western Gulf. So we'll have to watch it in this area east of Mexico. Um, again, most of the rain going to be off to the northeast with this uh, if it can't concentrate. So don't hope for too much rain in Texas here. But if the UK Met solution does work out, then you could possibly get some rain in here in northern Mexico and southern Texas. So we will see how that works out. Uh, but here's our other system out in the eastern Atlantic. While we've been watching 92L back at home, uh, Tropical Storm Aaron has developed near the Cape Verde Islands um, from a tropical wave that came off of Africa. And uh, you can see her spinning very nicely here, forecasted to strengthen a little bit over the next couple of days. But you can see already it's starting to suck in these patches of flat looking clouds. These are stratocumulus indicating a stable layer within the trade wind inversion. And uh, this is getting sucked into the system. And uh, that's going to probably cause it to weaken after strengthening once it gets farther to the northwest here. And as it weakens, it'll probably curve back to the west. You can see the models bringing it west northwest and then kind of a bend towards the west a little bit more here in some of the models as it weakens most of the models actually dissipate the storm by day seven and this is not because of abnormally dry air a lot of people saying Aaron's going to die because of abnormally dry air in the eastern Atlantic this year that's not true if you look at the GFS initialization all of the air is more moist than normal in here high precipitable water values relative to normal that's not to say that the eastern Atlantic isn't dry up here it's always dry up here uh, but it's not drier than normal and by 48 hours again no dry air around the storm the reason Aaron's probably going to weaken here is because the air is not dry so much as it is stable and stable usually comes with dry, but it's not more dry than normal. It's more stable than normal because there's more high pressure in the Central Atlantic this year than there were during the last few years. Uh, during the last few years, you could get any kind of hurricane to develop out here and bomb out in the middle of nowhere uh, southwest of the Azores. That's not going to be true this year uh, because this high is here and the NAO is more positive. So uh, this is blocking storms from coming up and strengthening in here the area that we have to watch this year is back towards the islands and east of the islands because this is where the water is warmer than normal and uh, this is where the instability is going to be highest right in here this is not the year for a bunch of storms to strengthen into major hurricanes out in the middle of nowhere which is why we see Aaron forecasted to weaken here but this is starting off the pattern now. We've been talking about how the hurricane season is kind of waiting to get pushed into um, into the green mode, green light for these waves to start developing. And now we have the MJO, which has been milling around in the center here, forecasted by all of the models, including the European, to come out into phases one and two, which are favorable for the Atlantic. And this is uh, coinciding with the cold outbreak that is going to be ending across uh, the central to eastern US but as this cold outbreak has come in now it's caused a lot of air to sink over the continent and it's been ramping up the upward motion in the tropics this kind of a pattern late in the summer can really spark the Atlantic and get it going and that's what we're probably going to see now with the MJO coming to the favorable phases during the heart of the season as we get towards early September the peak of the season occurs on September 10th and we're getting towards that time so we're probably going to see a lot of these waves uh, start developing we have Aaron now Probably not going to be a big threat. There's another wave behind it coming off. That might have to be watched. And these waves are going to eventually start uh, going in here. And we may see some developments farther west in the Caribbean as well if conditions allow. So the hurricane season has yet to really start in earnest. We're probably about to enter the most active period of the year. Uh, so we'll continue to watch out here. So overall, uh, Invest 92L stretched out in here, bringing lots of rain to Central America, will bring lots of rain into the Central and Eastern Gulf Coast from the Mississippi eastward towards the Florida Panhandle, regardless of where the actual center tracks. We could see center reformations as this comes uh, across the Yucatan, um, but the overall guts of the system should continue northwest into the Western Gulf of Mexico and 
it could be stretched to death here and we might have to watch for it to reconcentrate in a couple of days but it could just as easily get stretched to death in here so overall not a huge worry at the moment uh, but heavy rains will be added to places that don't really need them over the next couple of days Aaron coming west likely to strengthen first and then weaken as she curves off to the west northwest forecasted to dissipate by all the models uh, you never know if she could sneak west with something um, structured enough that she might have to be watched again farther west if she gets north of the islands but right now no threat but she is a sign that the pattern is getting more active in the atlantic and the peak of the hurricane season is rapidly approaching all right that's it for today thanks for watching